All right, let's take a look at another sign here. And you can see right off the bat that this looks like it's going to be fairly simple. But I really wanted to cover it simply because, especially if you live in Korea, this is probably something that you see more often than you think. It's actually the law in Korea, in a Korean restaurant, if you're the proprietor of a restaurant, that you must have this type of sign hanging from the restaurant. Uh, and what it's telling the customers is where the food that you're selling, where it actually comes from, meaning what country it comes from. We can actually understand that very simply if we look at the Hanja characters that this word is based off of. Well, Wan... One, I actually have a hanja, it's, it's in one of my hanja lessons where I talk about all of these characters in this lesson refer to starting something or the origin of something. And here is this character, Wan. And this is the character, and you can see where you might see it. And this refers to origin. Origin. Now, san is sort of a similar meaning, but it kind of means, it usually means actually to give birth. But in this situation, you're not giving birth to food. So it's sort of the production of the food or something like that. It most commonly is used to refer to birth or birthing something. But, you know, it was food. So you don't really give birth to food, but you can produce food. And G, G is another uh, common character that means place or location or land or something like that. So I could just write location. So again, as I said, what this sign is showing me is the location in which the food came from. Or, or if I break down these characters here, it's the location in which the food or the origin in which it was produced. Now, there's not that many words here. I'll start by just telling you the food names. Sal, sal, that actually means rice. And you might be saying, well, hey there, Mr. How to Study Korean. I know that the word for rice is pop. pop. And actually, Korean people, they have a different word for cooked rice, and that's pop, and that's the, the rice that you would eat. But sal is the uncooked rice, uncooked rice. And if you buy rice in a big bag, you don't call it pop, you call it sal. So their rice, uh, that they, they call it sal. Now, kimchi, that's the same thing in English. That's just kimchi. There's nothing funny going on there. That's just kimchi. And kodunga, that's a type of fish. And actually, I, I think it's this translates to actually mackerel. I'm not really a fish expert in English either, so I don't even really know what a mackerel is in English. But this kodung, that's sort of irrelevant. That's just saying, if I say, well, what does the word mackerel mean in, in, uh, in English? Well, I don't know what that means. It's just the name of a fish. And it's sort of the same thing going on here. But all, all refers to fish. And the hanja character for this is actually quite simple. And if you know any Chinese, and that's me, I only know a very, very small amount of Chinese, but I know this character in Chinese. And by that logic, I also know it in hanja. I, I'm sorry, there should have only been four of those lines at the bottom. I'll erase that one here. Uh, this is the Hanja character for fish. And if you ever see this at the end of uh, a word like this, if you see sort of two syllables or one syllable followed by all, it, it actually it could mean a language, but it also could mean a fish. So sometimes you'll see, especially on a sign like this, well, it can't be talking about a language. All, if we're talking about the place in which food came from, well, it can't be talking about language. Well, it could be talking about fish. And Whenever I see this all in places that where the word could be about fish, I just know that this is probably some fish name that I don't really need to worry about, but I just know that it's a fish because of this all that follows it. What I have here is pechu. Pechu uh, means cabbage. Cabbage, pechu. I don't know why there's such a big space, or I guess I wanted to keep it in line with the one below, but pechu means cabbage. And this is actually the name of... Uh, the, the the cabbage that is used in kimchi and actually that's why it's next to kimchi is they're saying okay kimchi uh and they're gonna they're gonna say where the cabbage where the cabbage in the kimchi comes from well it comes from uh i'll, I'll tell you where it comes from in a second and then this word here i'm going to break this down into two words for you the first word is kochu and that refers to uh a, a hot pepper Okay, so it's it's sort of like a, a a green pepper, but you know what a hot pepper is. It kind of looks kind of looks like this, and it, it's it's spicy, obviously, and it kind of has like a little little stem here. And Korean people use it in a lot of stuff, a hot pepper. And then karu, karu actually refers to so this is hot pepper. Karu actually refers to powder, and uh, you it doesn't necessarily need to be hot pepper powder, but hot pepper powder. Uh, or kochukaru 
is something that's very, very commonly used as an ingredient in Korean cooking. And it, it's it's a main ingredient in kimchi. And it's, it's really the main thing that makes kimchi so red is this gochukaru. Now, you might be looking at this word here and saying, well, wait a second. Kochu is this and karu is this. But what's what's this thing here? What is this extra letter doing at the bottom here? What is this doing here? It's not kochu karu. It's kochu karu. Well, that's kind of interesting. There's this extra letter. And actually, it's called the sai, sai, meaning middle, sai shio. And shio is the name of this letter in Korean. And it sort of means the in-between, the in-between shio, or the in-between of this letter. It's a very interesting uh, concept of why it's added to sort of in-between these two words. So this is one word and this is another word. I find it interesting, but I'm a big Korean grammar nerd. I actually have a lesson on it. It's in a very late lesson, lesson 131. But you don't really need to know anything about Korean grammar to read this lesson. It might help just to know the words a little bit, but it just sort of describes when, where, and why you would use this this thing. And it actually changes the pronunciation. I, it's in a very late lesson because it's kind of a difficult thing to really understand. But even if you're a very beginner, it might be interesting just to read this, just to get an idea of what's happening here. You don't really, it doesn't change the meaning. It's just saying, well, that's hot pepper. Well, that's powder. So it's just hot pepper powder. But it, I, I really highly suggest you read that lesson because I really enjoyed writing that lesson. So now we know all the food. We have uh, the rice, the kimchi, the, 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 some type of fish, the cabbage, and the, and the hot pepper powder. Now, these things here are telling me where they came from. Specifically, I'll, I'll say the one that is here three times. This one, this one, and this one. All three of these have the same thing. Goop refers to country. Versus the country, and there's a, a very common Hanja character that you probably, if you know any Chinese, you'll probably know the character for this. Ne, so guk refers to country. Ne refers to inside. Inside. And then san, well, this is actually the same san that we saw up here, meaning sort of the birth or, or the production. So if I ever say gung ne san, that refers to its, I, I would say, if I translated it, sort of nicely into English, I would say that's how you say made in Korea. In any other countries, they actually say the name of the country. But whenever it's made in Korea and you're in Korea, in that case, obviously, you're saying gungne because you wouldn't be putting this on a... You wouldn't say gungne if you were in Canada and because you, you wouldn't be speaking Korean. So you'd say made in Canada or something like that. But the way that Korean people say made in Korea is they put this gungne san on it. Now, so this is saying that this is made in Korea, this is, and this is made in Korea, and this is made in Korea. This here, so you see this sun on all of them. And again, this is the same sun that you see at the end of, you see, it's the same sun that we see here. And what you would do after any country, so this is a country here, and this is also another country. After any country that any food would come from, you would put sun after it to indicate that that's where that thing was produced. For example, if something was made in Canada, what you would do is you would say Canada san to indicate that whatever food it is, it came from Canada. You could also say, also say Miguk san to say it's from America or any other country. Right here we have Chungguk, which refers to China. And what we have here, if we just spell this out, this says very slowly, it's No Ru We Yi san. And if you say that in Korean, or if I, it would say Norway. And if I say it in, in English, it would say Norway. And specifically, it's saying this is from Norway, this is from China, and the rest of this is all from, uh, well, it's Gungne San, which means it's from uh, Korea. Well, that was fun. I hope you learned a lot. Like our sign videos? You can see all of our Korean sign explanation videos by clicking the link here. We also have a ton of videos showing various aspects of Korean culture, tourist areas, cuisine, and everyday life. You can go there by clicking this link here. You can also subscribe to our channel by clicking this button.